And joining us now on the 100th episode of the CJN Daily are our podcasters, Palooza, Avi Feingold, Ilana Zakon, and David Sklar of Bonjour Chai. Hello. And we have, um, we have Rivka Campbell from Rivkush, Ralph Ben Mergi from Yechupitzville, and the Mensch Warmers, Gabe Pulver and James Hirsch. And we are missing Laura Lebo from, um, you know, her comedy show, uh, My Favorite Kind of Jews. And also our producer extraordinaire. That's not the name of the show, is it? <laughs> it's called Some of My Favorite Jews. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> And Michael Freeman, who is our executive producer, welcome all to the 100th anniversary uh, episode of the CJN Daily. It's great to have you all together. Hi. Hello. Great to be here. Thanks for organizing this. It's great to have you. I should say also my producer, Victoria Redden, who is uh, standing by to make sure we are all corralled into (laughs) doing this properly. So welcome, Victoria. So we're going to start with Bonjour Chai. The question for everyone is, how did you come up for the name for your show? And was it your first choice? So Bonjour Chaiers, take it away. That would be an Avi question. Um, Yeah, I think that we, in the early days, so this is almost a year ago by now, we've been batting around, like, what are we going to call this thing? Um, you know, our tagline of Frozen Chosen was actually one of the contenders. Um, we had like, we were throwing like what kind of like Jewish and Canadian things that we can intersect and overlap. And uh, at some point there was something with language that showed up. We were like, oh, bonjour, hi, bonjour, hi. And uh, that's the one that kind of stuck that had universal appeal that we were asking people. And every time I would say, oh, we're doing this show, like we, we got a title and they're like, oh, yeah, finally, what is it? I'm like, oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about it, but like, what do you think? Bonjour, hi. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, I love it. So um, kind of stuck. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, that's where we ran with it. And then Saturday Night Live picked it up sort of, that was pretty cool too, right? Bonjour, hi. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, synergy in the cultural ether. So we made it work. All right. Now, Ralph, I can barely pronounce it properly. So how did the name come up for your podcast? Uh, I had almost nothing to do with it. Uh, we had an idea. Uh, Michael uh, and me and uh, Mark Weisblatt, actually, I think was part of it. Uh, And we were just thinking about this idea of doing a show about Jews who don't live in Toronto or Montreal or, you know, just Jews who just live in Canada and different places. And Michael got back to me and said, you know, what about Yehopitzville in his way? And I said, uh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, And uh, we went with it. What we figured out, what we realized was that it's a, a word that actually is the reverse of what it used to mean. It used to be that if you were in the shtetls and, you know, the Pale of Settlement in the Ukraine, Yehopitzville was Kiev. If you were going to Kiev, that was going to Yehopitzville. Now, if you're going to you know, Bathurst and Clark, that's Yehopitzville. If you're going to Kamloops, that's Yehopitzville. So it's been reversed, but we've had fun with it. Am I right about this, Michael? Have I got it right? Yeah, no, the definition is absolutely right. Uh, Mark Weisblatt did come up with the name, full credit to him, uh, in our Slack channel, and I just forwarded it to you. But there was unanimous agreement. It was one of those instances where when you you see a good name, it clicks. Yeah. We should bring in Menschwarmers, because honestly, that is literally the best name ever for a Jewish sports show. So how did you guys come up with a name? Thank you. Uh, I think that the credit goes to Gabe. Um, we were just having lunch one day and, and, you know, had this idea for the Jewish podcast. And I think, you know, free, free wheel and some jazz, uh, not unlike what we do on our, on our pod. And, and Gabe came up with Mench Warmers. Yeah, I think we had pitched the show already and, and we needed a name to come up with. And we, I remember coming up with it and Jamie said, put a pin in that one. And then we just, we forgot about the conversation and moved on. And that was that. Um, but so far, I think the name is pretty much entirely how we get guests to appear on the show. Yeah, people people's reaction is typically, oh, that's hilarious. And and I think does quickly convey, um, you know, that this is a sports show, sort of, and definitely a Jewish one. And I, I, I don't think we had anything else that was sort of on the back burner. Um, I, I did some research, Gabe, into our past emails about it. And I think the only other contender was Full Court Perez. Um, but, uh, for various reasons, we didn't use that. And I think, I think for good reason, we didn't use that. So, um, yeah, we'll always be the mentors. It's a good segment name, full court Perez for like Nobel prize winning Jewish athletes. If we ever get one of those. 
Awesome. And Rivka, uh, your name is your name. <laughs> Tell us my how that happened. How my, did you my name is my name. So um, I, it's, it's actually a nickname. It's a term of endearment. It's an Israeli term of endearment. So like we have, you know, in Yiddish, we have Rivkala, which sometimes people call me Rivkala. And they say it just like that. I'm also called Ricky. Um, but in Israel and my equal other, I'm Rav Kush. So I kind of got used to, you know, hey, Rav Kush, yes. And even went as far as to have a, my license plate says Rav Kush. And so in the back of my head, I always thought that's going to be the name of whatever I do. And so when we were deciding between Michael and I, what are we going to call the podcast? We went through various names and they didn't resonate. Some were just awkward. You know, it was just like a mouthful, like, why is the name of the podcast an, an entire sentence kind of thing? And we weren't sure if Riv Kush would resonate because it is so culturally specific, right? You know, it's, it's Israeli and what people, not to mention, let me tell you, some people have stopped me asking me if it has anything to do with marijuana when they see my license plate. So that's an unexpected consequence of the name Riv Kush. But anyway, so we finally came back to it because as Michael pointed out, it's it's me and it's you could get a marijuana to sponsor as one of your sponsors like a cannabis there, store right there you no, go make a uh, make let a me make a note like merch, <laughs> merch, merch. <laughs> oh my goodness the merch. That, that that might be that might be a bit much considering my heritage is jamaican it might have a whole other <laughs> meaning <laughs> that my, my 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 mother might not be amused with but anyway so we came back to riv kush because it's Riff Kush, full stop. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. I actually, I can't say anything about my name. It was my pod, our podcast name. It was going to be News by Jews or the Daily Spiel, but um, I just decided to be a mini Jewish New York Times Daily. Literally, I couldn't figure out a better way to say what we were. And I still like News by Jews, but uh, it ended up being the CJN Daily. That's our story. I don't have to get it on my license plate, but that's not a bad. <laughs> um, so, guys, what is? We'll start with uh, Mensch Warmers again. The best story you've done that you like the most? Uh, that's a really tough question um, because I think, you know, sports are such that maybe our favorite stories aren't necessarily our most popular. And in the, the you know, podcasting game, it's hard to separate the two. Um, I, I think one of my one of my favorite ones that we did in the previous iteration was um, we did an episode all about non-Jewish athletes who have embraced different elements of Judaism. Um, for example, uh, Steph Curry of the Golden State Warriors has a Hebrew tattoo on his arm. Um, wide receiver Antonio Brown owns a house in, or at least owned a house in Miami that has a synagogue in it. Um, I believe that was just because the previous owner had built one there and he had said some funny things about that. That, that was that was a fun one. There were all kinds of weird, you know, little um I don't know, appropriations of Jew Jewish culture that have been taken on by those athletes. Um, that was a good one. I think, um, I don't know, one of my favorite Jewish sports stories of, of the last several years was was more personal of just when the Raptors won and Larry Tannenbaum grabbed the uh, grabbed the championship trophy and yelled Chagba while lifting it up like it was a Torah. That was pretty great. I didn't um, know that. Did you guys know that? <laughs> oh, I mean, we, we, we knew it. We knew it. It's our, that's, that's our, it's our job. It's our remit to know to know exactly that. You should have yelled, you know, something more, you know, called up an Aaliyah. That would have been <laughs> exactly. Good. That's yeah, the, the next she... championship. The next championship. <laughs> yeah. Well, Ralph, what about you, Ralph? Yeah, he or... could have called up Drake for an Aaliyah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 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 what right. about you, Ralph? What was your favorite so far uh, or most fun story that you've done for Yehobitzville? Well, there's been a few that I've actually really enjoyed. I, I kind of like it when there's more than one person in the show uh, at times. So, Michael, do you have one you like? Yeah, uh, I, well, I was going to actually help you out there. Uh, the, we recorded one with a, a guy who runs a deli uh, in oh, yeah. BC. Um, and then two days after that, my computer died uh, and I lost the recording. <laughs> That's and right. so we, had to, we had to go back to him and re record it. And he's an old friend of, of uh, Busgang, right? Howard Busgang. Yeah, he's, an uh, old, he, he's a stand up from the, from the old days that we, we grew up together. So he has yeah. a deli, Buzzies on Salt Spring Island. So we did this interview and it was great. It was a fun interview. And then Michael calls me, <laughs> emails me, goes, uh, my computer died. Uh, can you do that again? And I said, you know, I don't think it'll be very good if I do it again. It'll all be kind of contrived. 
Uh, but I said, I do know Zane Koplansky, who also lives on Vancouver Island up in Tofino. So why don't we just have both of them on? And these guys had a smoked meat love fest. Like they were talking about this as if it was, you know, the greatest modern art possible to great to, to make a great brisket. And I, I just got out of the way and let them jam on being deli guys. And that was a lot of fun, I have to say. Yeah, that was probably the best thing that could have come out of uh, me having to wait a week to get my computer back. <laughs> the last time someone went to Tofino and, and didn't have to apologize. Okay. Um, Rivka, best story that you've done, the most fun so far? Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. You know, it may sound like cliche, but I've loved them all for, for different reasons. You know, so for example, one that I had to contain myself was Rain Pryor because, you know, I'm the generation that grew up with Richard Pryor, who I wasn't really allowed to listen to, but nonetheless, you know, he, he's an icon, right? And I also remember Rain from when she did the TV show and I kind of low key stalk her on Facebook. And I'm telling you the first, when I think Michael said that you would never have guessed that we didn't know each other before because it was like running into my sister from another mister. And it was just an amazing conversation, the two of us. And I just, you know, once I got over the fangirl gushing, which was really hard, <laughs> it was it was fun. But like I said, all of them have different elements. You know, like when I speak to the Shafatinsky family, they have their own thing. And and but yeah, it's really hard for me to pick. I thought that. Um... Rain Pryor was a big get. So let's ask uh, the Bonjour Chai people, you know, what was your most fun episode? Whether it's a big get, you just mm. had one, which is a huge get for you. But was that your most fun? That one was really fun. That might have been the most fun in terms of fun, in terms of great episodes. I feel like there's been so many, but I always, um, uh, Michael, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> the most fun in terms of fun. I thought that was a funny answer. I, I actually... I, I would like to hear David go first. David, what's the favorite episode that you've recorded so far? Well, seeing as how I was only on one episode, I just had my first one last week. I think that's the only one I could really say. I could talk about hopeful ones, but it was with Mark Oppenheimer last week. Well, David, what was your favorite one that you heard, like as a mm. listener, before you oh. even said to yourself, oh, maybe I could be the next voice of Bonjour High when you were listening to them? What was your, the one that said, hooked you in and said, oh, this is, this is a really great show? Uh, the the Rivka Campbell one, the Rivka Campbell one. I, I was going to say, if it was the main one, you know, that's the one. one. That's totally <laughs> <cool too. laughs> I Definitely think it's, Riff Kush. There was a, I, 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 every day now, I sort of go for like a daily walk for about 10,000 steps. So that's when I tuned into a lot of the Bonjour Highs. And I think one of my favorite was the question where you asked, are Jews white? And that was always a question that was going on in my mind. And really a lot of my fellow Jews were really asking each other, what do we constitute? Are we white passing? Are we um, today white, but in the past we weren't white? Uh, we enjoy these white privileges of ours, but what happens when everything is pulled out of the rug and we don't feel like we belong anymore? I think that was a very fascinating and interesting conversation. Um, even I think the last one I listened to before was when you were talking about Toronto real estate prices and how everything is just going crazy in Vancouver, Montreal, and Toronto. And I was yelling on my podcast, then move to Calgary already, because it's so much more um, it's so much more accessible here for home prices that I think in Calgary, it's a bit of an undiscovered gem. That's so cool that everyone's listening to everybody else's podcasts. Um, and I think that brings us to a topic which we should uh, all weigh in on if or whoever wants to go, which is, you know, look what we're doing that's never been done in Canada before telling these J Canadian Jewish stories. You know, uh, what do you make of the importance of your job and your mission to your audience? Anybody can weigh in. Uh, well, I, I can speak to that a little bit. I think, um, you know, men's we're we're doing something that's a little, um, I would say, uh, unserious at times, and 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 not as important as as other things and uh, things that other people might be doing. You know, it's, I don't it's, agree. I don't agree with that. I'd you like you to don't say agree. That our podcast that, is extremely that, serious, one hundred and fifty percent of the time. That's fine. I, I think the stakes are low. How about that? The stakes are relatively low when it comes to sports, but we've always said that our mission is sort of 
um, changing the way that Jews think of athletics and Jewish athletics and, and Jewish, Jewish athletes. And, you know, it, it's all, it all comes from that, that same old joke from the movie airplane about, uh, you know, a, a light reading, a thin plant pamphlet about, uh, you know, the famous Jews in sports and wanting to, you know, change the way Jews think of themselves in that regard that, you know, Jews can do anything, can be anything. And um, I, I don't know, the, the idea of, of Jewish people as being um, physically weaker or something like that uh, is, is outdated and silly. So I think that's sort of been uh, the entirety of our, our, our mission in that regard and, and what we've, you know, what we've set out to do. And um, I don't know, and, and, and try to, and, and try to change change the record. One thing I'd like to top up on that, uh, if anyone wants to go back and listen to our uh, interview we had with Edmonton Oilers uh, player, Zach Hyman, um, he talks a lot about his responsibility as being a leader in the Jewish community. Uh, and it's a really interesting conversation, not to give too many spoilers, but I think that speaks to James' point well of sort of uh, 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 taking your job very seriously as being, uh, uh, you know, representative of something different about Jews. Yeah. What I like is the Jewish podcast thing before this often was very instructional, very sagey, very, you know, we're Jewish people, let's discuss this issue. Uh, is it, and would it be bad to say it was very rabbinical? Yes. Hey, 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 hey watch it. <laughs> Sounds like you're describing our show. Yeah, no, yeah, but I mean, I, what I like about it is there's energy. Like in these podcasts, we're talking as people who happen to be Jewish, who happen to be engaged in society. So I like that. And I like that, you know, that there's uh, different age groups throughout the podcast and all of that. So yeah, that, for me, that's the cool part. So what Ralph is saying is interesting because to me, the, the first sentence that came to me when I was conceiving of this idea for a show, and this was even, you know, in the early days when we were even sure what the resurrection of the CJN was going to be like, I might have been doing this independently, um, was that we as Jews and Canadian Jews have a unique perspective. And that while I wanted to cover stories that were of interest to lots of people, I wanted to represent this idea of what did it mean um, for the approach to be something that was uniquely Canadian, right? Not just the stories that are coming up that are Canadian, but what angle as Canadians are we asking ourselves, what is it that we're bringing to the table about this story that um, gives Canadian Jews a voice on the you know, larger stage. And uh, if I had to sum up exactly what I was doing with Bonjour High or what we are doing, sorry, because it's now a three-headed three monster um, that is uh, greater than all of us to combined, um, it is uh, you know, that idea that uh, we, are, we are giving a voice to Canadian Jewry. And if I can say, you know, things that are being said, it resonate with me and the whole, concept behind Rivkush is about giving voice. And for me, it's quite personal. It's giving the voice of Jews of color who you often don't hear from or about or whatever within the community. And I felt it was important that it went also beyond Jews of color speaking about being Jews of color, but also seeing people or hearing people and imagining, look at my cartoon and <laughs> knowing how I look, talking about things that, that all of us speak about, you know, whether it's Israel, whether it's whatever the case may be, we'll stay away from sports, even though that's kind of a thing for me also. But, you know, and, and I thought it was very important. And so for other Jews of color to also um, have that opportunity to have a voice and to feel more part of our community. So it's a great platform for us. Okay, I have a question for the uh, sports guys. Is, are there any famous Jewish curlers? Ooh, good question. Um, I lived in Winnipeg was... and they had a, a Jewish curling club. And I thought, this is actually in the Talmud. You're not to do this. You're not. To... No curling. I think the Jewish form of curling is when you pay somebody else to sweep in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was at That's going to go well. Yeah. There was at some point some American Jews who were trying to create an Israeli curling team. Um, obviously not having much interest in curling itself as a country, but being able to qualify for the Olympics as, as Israelis based on the right of return. Uh, I don't know if they got very far. They might've competed in some tournaments, but they didn't get very far. Um, they still train in North America and yeah. they call themselves the frozen chosen, which actually every Jewish, like every yeah. Jewish person that performs in a winter sport, like in any winter sport has yeah. tried to take the name, the frozen chosen. Um, but none of them have done so far. Although we have a segment on our, on our podcast, and I don't mean to jump ahead in the, the agenda here, but we have a segment on our podcast called 
the Mike Jacobs all-star team where we talk about athletes who are not Jewish, who have names who sound like they might be Jewish. Mm. And you and everyone here might remember, we get asked about it more than you would think about Sandra Schmerler, who was not Jewish, even though she has a name that would suggest that she might be Schmerler the curler. Who do you want to get on your shows that you haven't got yet? Let's put it out. I'm going to start. Seth Rogen, you're ignoring me. Why? I've been after you for five months. Please respond. Can I go we... next? Can I go next? Because this is a mission. Y'all need to connect, especially you all in sports. You need to get me Drake. <laughs> Aubrey Graham. If you, if you have his number. Drake, if I have his number. I know where the man lives, but I don't want to be arrested. No, <laughs> so does Kanye. That was the whole problem. We you should know. ask Kanye. Seriously, you got to get me Drake. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I think our, our dream guest has always been to get Larry Tannenbaum on. Um, we, I would say the, the two Larrys are a big one. Larry Tannenbaum, we want to have on as a guest, talk about Toronto sports, everything involved in that. And then um, Larry David, just we want to play golf with him and uh, maybe maybe get him on as well after that. But, but mostly just play golf with him. We had a bit for a while where at the end of every episode, we would say, hey, Larry Tannenbaum, if you're listening, like the phones are open, like we'd love to have you on. So I guess this would be a, an appropriate time to say on your show, Ellen, hey, Larry, if you're listening, the phones are open. Please come on. It'll be all softball questions. We, we are not hard hitting journalists. <laughs> we just, we're just fans. What if we try to get William Shatner on before he goes on his final, final frontier? Uh, he, he did already. He was. In My space. husband said, you got to get him, you guys. No, so, uh, yeah, I, it's not out of the realm of possibility, given the deep spiritual nature of the individual, but I still think it's not impossible to get Leonard Cohen on our show. Um, but, Resurrection you know, from the dead. <laughs> we'll have to okay. figure that one out. Um, Another level. I'd still like to get, you know, Justin Trudeau on and ask him about, you know, uh, his deep connection with the Jewish community. And uh, um, I don't know. What do you guys, who do you guys want on the podcast? Um, I would really like to get Dara Horn on. Uh, people uh, love dead Jews. That's and listening. eminently doable. I bet you we can. Oh get no, that it one's definitely doable. I, this is not like an aspirational. I'm like, I would, I just would love to have a conversation with her. You put me we've, on the spot, Abby. We've been trying the same to get David Badil, who just wrote a book called Jews Don't Count, who's a similar uh, notable Jewish person who talks about anti-Semitism. Ralph. What, what city or town or village or, or yeah, yeah, people, like, who do you want? Our thing isn't about, you know, a, a personage of, of, note, of note or fame. It's there is somebody who I, I did pitch to Michael and he he said, no, not yet, because it wasn't in Canada. But there uh, somebody has turned me on to a Jewish guy in Japan. And I do want to talk to a Jewish guy in Japan about what it is to be Jewish in Japan. Like, do you, you know, do you? You have like this compulsive disclosure disorder where as soon as you meet somebody in Tokyo, you go, by the way, I'm Jewish, just to sort of explain yourself. So uh, eventually we'll get to it, but uh, not right away. That's but, season two, is it not? Is Jews not season, in Canada, right? Yeah, well, big, Jews, big Jews, Jews anywhere. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it's really about like uh, the one I'm, I'm, I'm taping tomorrow, actually. No, Wednesday is a, a, a Jewish person in St. John's, Newfoundland. So I'm looking forward to that. So I, I like different people in different places. That's the thing for us. Ralph, awesome. if you want to have a, a crossover episode, we can we can try to get Avi Schaefer on. He's a, a Jewish basketball player who plays for Team Japan, uh, a Japanese guy. So we can, I, we collaborate. I, I, I love it. I'm all for it. All right. Now I do. I, I'm going to do this. She's going to kill me. But we do have to ask Victoria, who is not Jewish, but has been part of the CJN Daily and uh, podcast since uh, April, um, you know, what do you make of, uh, this Jewish story that, you know, you're learning about, um, you know, and the importance of these stories, which, you know, you're now, you know, producing, how has that been for you? You know, it's actually, it's amazing starting this, how, like how much I realized that I didn't know anything about Judaism whatsoever going into this. So, I mean, it's been a really great learning experience. It kind of has made me as a person who grew up in a very like not cultural not religious waspy background pretty jealous honestly of all the like stuff going on with the heritage and community um and I don't know I feel like my favorite stories to listen to and to research um more so than anything are like the like the wacky max story and stuff like that kind of just the 
the stuff I wouldn't have thought of ever or really had like access to like learning about in a different uh a different capacity so that would probably be my answer for that um but Ellen I wanted to ask you you didn't answer who your favorite guest was but your favorite episode to work on was and I'm actually really curious as your producer this one everybody on the show because uh I love every single show that I've done. So um, I can't say that I have a favorite, but the most favorite thing that I love to do is be like Susie Reporter, which is what I did for so many years and go out into the community with a microphone. And because of COVID, we haven't been able to do that until now. So um, going to do deep investigative reporting about the end of Wacky Mac and having Avi's daughter part of it and, you know, getting in, I had to dress undercover as a religious woman and long skirt and modestly with flat shoes and pantyhose so I wouldn't offend anybody. And, you know, I went into the religious stores and and spoke to them and and I mean it was that's what I did for my whole life as a reporter as a foreign correspondent so being out in the field again and and talking to real Jewish people about things that are in their pantry was amazing and the second one was not so amazing was what we we get the same garbage and fake news and attacks from our community maybe even worse because we are also Jewish in some of our coverage. Um, and I was at an event in Toronto covering um, the factory fire, uh, which burned uh, in 1950 Toronto and killed nine workers who were all Holocaust survivors or Jewish immigrants. And there was an event um, in uh, Toronto a couple of weeks ago where the city opened up, made, unveiled the plaque and they had the survivors. And I was that was the first one that I actually got to go out in real life because of COVID kind of, it was outdoors, so I felt safe. And they were slagging the CJN in public on the microphone, saying that we were fake news and we didn't know what we were covering. And they were actually slagging one of our amazing, most amazing reporters. And I thought, like, who are you people? You know, no one else was there. I was the only media covering this thing. No one else cared about this historic tragedy. And 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 then they 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 still treat us like like Trump goes and, you know, slags journalists. It was disgusting. And so many other community leaders were coming around and, and sending emails saying, I was shocked that that was done. So, you know, we think nobody's listening and we think that we don't have a role, but we are doing groundbreaking stories that no, I mean, besides Wacky Mac being discontinued, poor Avi's daughter, there's not gonna be any left. But I mean, groundbreaking stories, we have a, a mission to tell stories um, in, a, in a way that is is nuanced and sensitive, but also hitting, areas which the Jewish community needs to listen to and to get garbage about people saying that we're making stories up is it was shocking to me that they would even feel that about that issue so you know that was uh that is proof to me that people are listening they may not like what we're doing but they actually are listening and that was my worst experience in the last hundred episodes so thanks for asking and I'm gonna jump in for a second I got my producer Andre here our technical production and I figured he should answer what he's learned about the Jewish community in Canada at the same time as uh, uh, from having produced uh, quite a few episodes of Bonjour Chai. Hey everyone uh, yeah every week there's something new that is so interesting um, and basically every episode is really valuable for an outsider, for a Gentile to be uh, picking up a little bit of new information. And I love it. Uh, so for me, it's educational. And I know that for the listener who might not be a Jewish listener, they're probably picking up a lot too. So it's super cool. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have all you guys together on my Zoom screen with all of us. Thank you, Michael, for uh, putting this all out there every night, every day, pressing the buttons, you know, and, and uploading with cool headlines. And uh, let's do it again when we hit a thousand. So as I say, a may of S stream, and I'll do another 20 and we'll hit a may of S stream, a hundred and sponsored. Thank you all for being on the CJN Daily. Thanks, Ellen. Thank you.